one it's me, Dennis. Um, so I was supposed to, I was supposed to get up this morning and just go straight to work. I work from home. Um, I work remotely, but I was like, you know what? I want to make a video. It's like every single morning, I just want to drink my cup of coffee with you guys. It's so weird, but it makes me feel so relaxed and good. So I thought we'd do that again today because my last video we did exactly the same thing. Um, but it's so enjoyable for me, and so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be training and talking. Um, I read an article yesterday that was so cool. Um, the main quest interviewed the game director Stacy Place as well as the CEO of Star Stable Jonah. And reading the article wasn't like it was a totally different experience. Um, I got to know the intentions of the CEO when creating the game, um, you know, how he got inspired, why he created this game, and so I want to show you guys that part of the interview, because it's a pretty long interview, but I'll just show you that part of it, and then I'll just link the whole interview down below in the, in the description box if you guys want to check it out. But here's the best part of the whole interview. I really enjoyed reading all of this for some reason. Star Stable Origins a few weeks after my chat with Stacy, and with the month long birthday party already coming to an end, I sit down for another video call. This time with none other than Jonah Zjoberg, I don't know how to pronounce that, Star Stable CEO. Jonah is part of the old guard of Star Stable Entertainment. He co founded Pixel Tales in 2004, the company who would go on to develop the Star Shrine Legacy titles and eventually kick off Star Stable Online. Jonah worked as a writer and producer on all of the original offline Star Stable games then was part of SSE's board of directors until he took up the position of CEO in 2017. I'm a pretty private person, Jonah admits, as he receives my call in his home while his kids are still at school and soccer practice. Most of the time, he's perfectly happy to leave the communication around Star Stable to the company's dedicated communication people, he tells me. I'm honored that he takes the time for the main quest, I remark with a grin. Since I have this rare opportunity to get Star Stable's history straight from the source, I ask Jonah where it all began. Star Stable enthusiasts may recall that MMORPG evolved out of a series of single-player PC games, but how did those come to be? The idea for the Star Shrine Legacy games resulted from a collaboration with a Norwegian book club subscription. The book club had issued retaining their users, so Pixel Tales came up with the idea of developing a series of connected games that would be distributed along with the books to keep the subscribers interested. Said book club subscription was horse-themed, so having horses as a central subject matter was the obvious choice. We wanted to do something different than what most horse games were doing though, Jonah explains. Even in 2004, the same handful of horse games set up tropes were already going strong. We were fans of fantasy adventures and of larger than life stories, he goes on. Our core concept was always something like Harry Potter meets Black Beauty. Since then, the essential philosophy of Star Stable games has remained largely the same. Girls deserve real games too, and we want to make those. Initially, we did not have the budget or resources to fully deliver that, but the intent was always there. And then there's this part too that's really good. This is the last thing I'm gonna read. Let's make an MMORPG for tween girls. Can have been a popular pitch for industry investors at the time. I pause it. How did the early Star Stable team overcome that and convince people of this project? A big aha moment was actually when we saw how players kept making fan videos on YouTube about riding their digital horses, Jonah tells me. We were thinking, how do we take this online? We experimented with a flash-based 2.5D show jumping game for a while. But the flash game route didn't feel right. Writing through a big open world was the experience that the team wanted to offer. Marcus, our creative director at the time, was playing. Not necessarily healthy amounts of World of Warcraft, Jonah recalls. We went, okay, how hard can it be? Let's make an MMO. The game producer in me cringes at that prospect, but miraculously, it worked out well for Star Stable. A few months later, they had their first prototype where people could ride through that open world side by side. That feeling was what we wanted, and it was obvious to us that this was going to work, says Jonah. How did it go from there? The original investors were people who had seen our journey so far, and who saw how much our players cared through those YouTube videos. The fact that World of Warcraft had a relatively large female player base was a factor as well. The people who joined along the way were often ones who already cared about the equine subject matter, either through family or by themselves. Many people knew this horse passion from personal experience, Jonah says, and they knew that this is not something that goes away easily. Now that SSO has been successfully running for a decade, one might assume that the industry caught up to the fact that horse lovers are a profitable audience, and yet, Star Stable Online barely has serious competition. Why is that? I think people know that to make a successful horse game, you need to have people who are truly passionate about horses, Jonas remisses. Not all of the original initiators of Star Stable had that passion, but we always made sure to work with people who did. 
Star Stable Entertainment has always been conscious in building up its equine knowledge base among its team and in having a diverse staff. The SSC team is about 54% female, Jonah tells me, which is the result of a deliberate effort in finding and retaining the right people. There is another aspect that makes the success of Star Stable daunting to replicate though. It's sheer breadth of content. Star Stable Online has lots and lots of content, so much that it can sometimes get confusing. And we still don't cover every area of what players might want, Jonah admits. It has grown over such a long time. Star Stable was always intended to be an everlasting journey, something that grows and evolves. That is incredibly difficult to do now, it's very much a long-term thing. I am reminded of previous talks I've had with publishers of low-budget horse games and opinions I've heard in the industry over the past few years. People claim that bigger budgets make no sense for horse games, because there aren't more people interested in this type of game, but when the success of Star Stable is mentioned, people consider it an entirely different beast. Its scope unattainable and its success irreplicable. The CEO of Star Stable seems like a pretty cool dude to me, but um, people say that he's the reason uh, we're not getting anything we ask for, even though that's not really true, because we are getting the things we ask for, but just not entirely. People have told me that the Star Stable team actually wants to uh, respond to the community and deliver the things we ask uh, we ask for, but the CEO is the one denying all of that and doing whatever he wants, even though... Like, I don't know, man. I cannot believe these things. I cannot believe any of this thing until I hear both parties. Because that is the only way you can, you know, form a solid and well-rooted opinion. Only after you hear both parties. So then I'm not gonna form an opinion. I don't know what to believe. I don't know if that's true or not, but from what I've read so far, um, Jonah seems like a pretty cool guy. And, um, I'm happy we got to know a little bit about him and about why he created Star Stable. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Also guys, I've been training, like what, what happened to me? I've been training lately on Star Stable, which is pretty cool. Um, I think it's because I really enjoy talking to you guys, so then I would just, you know, get on Star Stable, record a video like this one and just talk to you guys, and it's really enjoyable. And it's kind of overwhelming um, knowing how many horses I have to train, like I have so many horses to train, it's not even funny. Um, I think I have over 50. If I'm not wrong, to train. Um, I remember last time I counted how many horses I have, there were like over a hundred I believe, and I was like, when did this happen? Literally, when did I get these many horses? But then if you look over at my channel, I have so many buying new horses videos, it's not okay. Um, also guys, I've been on a- can I just stop being a noob? Um, also I've been on a horses ban and I haven't bought any briar horses in like 20 days, I believe, which is like insane. I'm so proud of myself. Um, to be honest, I got really, I kind of panicked when I calculated how much money I spent on horses lately. Um, I literally, let's say that for instance, I had like a thousand dollars in my bank account, right? After getting back into the horses hobby, I had 500. No, I had 400. So that is how much money I spend for my whole bank account on horses. Like I, like not even, like more than half of my money just went on bridal horses. And so, uh, when I saw that, um, I did have a mini heart attack. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I was like, you know what? This must come to an end. And also, I'm really happy with my collection right now. Um, I have two shelves. I'm like, okay, that's enough. You know what I mean? Um, I still have six more on the way that I'm waiting for, but I'm not gonna buy any more horses. Um, Anytime soon, just because I need to stop. I need to stop. Also, guys, I have some good news coming up. Should I even tell you this or not? For some reason, I feel so much anxiety talking about personal things on my Star Stable channel, just because, I don't know, I just don't know who's watching my videos, you know what I mean? I just don't know. Um, but there's a high chance I might be visiting the States in 2022. A friend called me there. A friend that I actually met here um, in real life, so it's not like I'm gonna get kidnapped or anything, don't worry about that. But yeah, I'm like... That was a dream for me, like I've always wanted to visit the States, and at one point, at one point I was like... I'm done. Like, it's never gonna happen, why am I even hoping for this, I'm just done. And then out of nowhere, the invitation came, and I was like, hmm, nice. But to go to the States is like, man, it's a pain in the butt. There's so many procedures you have to go through to get a visa. Um, I got a passport, which was like really quick and nice, you know, that's not the issue. But like to get a visa done, to get accepted 
the only thing keeping me away from you know actually going to the states right now is the interview that I'll have. Um, so that is a factor that will determine whether or not I'll be visiting the states or not. Because if I do not get my visa, then I cannot go there. But if I do get my visa, then you best believe I'm gonna be in the states in 2022. I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be a month there. I'm gonna be spending a month in the states. What am I gonna do? And I will not be able to upload videos for a month straight, which is kind of weird, to be honest. That's gonna feel very strange to me, to be honest. Because I upload videos um, a lot, because I really enjoy recording videos and editing them and talking to you guys and all that. So, yeah, that will be that will be different, I guess. Um, but I'll get to step into a briar story in real life, which is a dream come true to me, which is a childhood dream. Anyway, um, maybe I should stop talking about horses. I mean, not horses, but like briar horses. I'm really trying to find a balance between YouTube, my work, and then uh, my free time. Because I always do something. It's like I cannot not do something, if that makes any sense. Like I cannot do um, something. I can't. I just can't rest. You know what I mean? And so I'm trying to find balance between rest, working, and YouTube. Because I love doing YouTube, but it's like... Like as, like right now, I should be working. Like the reason I woke up at 7am today was to... You know, wake up early, start working... Um, because I, for some reason, I'm really productive in the morning, and then, you know, get it work done, because tomorrow I have an, tomorrow I have a meeting at my job, and so, why am I playing Star State right now, like, why am I recording a video, <laughs> but, like, the thing is that I really want to talk to you guys, I really enjoy doing this, so then I'll do this, and then I'll do my work, um, uh, let me show you guys what I'm working on right now, um, this is just the homepage of the website that I'm working on, it's just a variant um, one of them, there are many, many different home screens, home screen variants, this is just one of them, um, it's my favorite one, uh, I'm not the one deciding which one remains though, I'm only doing design, and the boss is gonna be the one, um, you know, telling me whether or not we're gonna stick with this one, if there needs to be any more adjustments done to the design, any more changes, but I really enjoy working from home, I really enjoy I'm really happy with where I am right now in my life. Like I have been longing for this period of my life for, I'm not even joking, for like five years or maybe even more. To just wake up in the morning, be my own, well, I'm not my own boss. I'm not my own boss, but like, there's so much flexibility going on. Um, I just have to, you know, get my work done due to my deadline. I do not have to work like five hours per day, for example. No, I have to just, um, get my work done due to a certain day, so I just have to like, you know, make my own schedule, which is really cool, I can be very flexible, and so that's amazing, I'm so content with where I am right now, and I'm really into business, like I'm really into business, uh, I have so many plans for the future, I'm already investing in um, the crypto market, <laughs> this is so funny, how did we get here, <laughs> but like, I have so many plans for the future regarding my career, and uh, I really want to release my own... Like, I've had this dream for, like, years now, uh, for, like, two or three years, I think, for my second year of high school. Uh, I want to have my own coffee brand, because I'm a really big coffee addict. I really love coffee, and so I hope that one day, you know, I'll be able to do that, to have my own coffee brand. That would be amazing. My... My younger self would be so proud of myself if I ever accomplished that. And I'm sure that with time and with right decisions, with right financial decisions, I'll get there. Um, but yeah, that would be like a dream come true. This Arabian is really pretty. I wish that training would take um, a shorter period of time so that I could enjoy all my horses, because, you know, to train a horse, to max a horse, you have to, like, spend five days, I believe, to do all the races. I might be wrong. Maybe it's less than that. Um, and it's not like I'm gonna do all the races every day, Dennis, what are you doing? It's not like I'm gonna do all the races every day, you know what I mean? And so then it's gonna take longer than five days, and so I don't want to be riding the same horse for, like, a week or more, because to max a horse, for me, it takes, like, maybe, like, two weeks or a week and a half. 
I'm just not being consistent with it, that's the thing. I have things to get done, I'm not... Um, like, training horses right now <laughs> is really not a priority in my life. I have so many other things to do. Um, but I just train in the morning while I talk to you guys and record these videos, because I really enjoy it. And I hope you guys do too. Then another plan that I have is to release more merch, but like with different designs, with lower prices. I wish there would be more merchandise websites like Teespring, because Teespring takes so much money, the fee is crazy, like it's so big. And the profit margin is so small. And um, I don't want to release merch for money, I want to release merch because I want people to wear Dinky Rat merch all over the globe, that would be so cool. Just, I said this before in my last video, just the idea of people actually being connected with me from all over the world through a joke through the dinky rat joke and inside joke whatever it is like that's just crazy i love that um i bought the navy blue hoodie for myself i cannot wait to wear it in my videos and to see how the material actually feels like of the merchandise i'm pretty sure it's good because it's teespring every big youtuber uses that i'm not even a big youtuber like why did i choose teespring I think it's because it's like the most reliable one and I did not want to have any complications and like I didn't want to risk anything, you know what I mean? Didn't want to have any problems with my merchandise and like um, the handling of it and all that. So then I went with Teespring, even though I knew that would mean um, lower sales because Teespring just takes so much money. The fees are so big. Oh, I cannot feel my foot. I cannot wait for the characters update. I'm so excited for that. When I was younger, I used to call Fear Grove Village Fire Grove. I always said Fire Grove, like how weird. I really hope with the new characters update, we get more uh, different hairstyles to choose from that are more, I wouldn't say masculine, but that would fit more for a boy like me. Because the only hair that we have right now that would, you know, work for me, I guess, is this hairstyle. And it looks like a hedgehog hair. Like, you can't tell me I don't look a hedgehog, you know what I mean? The Fear Grove races are really cool. They're really nice, even the updated ones. Because they used to look so different. I want to go to Germany. I want to visit Germany so bad, it's such a beautiful country, I love the mountains. However, it's a really expensive country, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, but I really want to go there and drive there, you know what I mean? I have a few stops, like maybe like... I'm from Romania, by the way, so like I would stop halfway, which is like... Austria maybe and then I would you know stop again in Germany so I would sleep the night in Austria and then get back to driving back on the road hit the road again and go to Germany I really want to visit Germany so bad for some reason like it's so beautiful I've been to Switzerland before that's paradise on earth let me tell you however it's really expensive like I remember I spent for a sandwich I think 20 euros <laughs> that was something else 20 euros would be like $25. We are so blessed as a generation regarding the way we can earn our living. There's so many different jobs now than there used to be like when our parents were our age. Um, and that's so amazing. You could never, like our parents could not earn their living um, from, you know, being a social media influencer, for example. Or from, I don't know, there's just so many ways to make money nowadays, and it's like, we have so many more opportunities. And it's not just about, you know, being an influencer, there's so many other ways you can earn your living by doing things online. Um, and it's really cool. I hope that did not sound wrong, because I did not mean that to sound wrong when I said by doing things online. But we have so many, so many more options. There were not many... Um, remote jobs back then now you can be at home and just work and I feel like even the pandemic has influenced this so much like for example um, the boss I work for he told me that the pandemic kind of like brought him to the point where he just hired people from all over the, um, the country and he just started working with them online and just meet on zoom and all that and that's really cool if you think about it People spread out from all over the place, just meeting together and working on the same thing. That's... that's nice. I love these races so much, they're so... they're so different because you have rain, which is cool. Oh, not on this one, the one I just did. But apparently my audio stopped recording, so... 
Anyway, um, I've always been a fan of thunderstorms and lightnings, I never got scared of them. My girlfriend thinks I'm crazy and she's not wrong about it, but... Yeah, there's something about lightnings and thunderstorms that I really like. Um, I got the... When I got the vaccine done, the woman, you know, um, giving me the vaccine, the one stabbing me with a needle. Um, <laughs> what is wrong with me? Um, as she was giving me the vaccine, she covered um, the needle of the syringe with her arm. And I was like, I wanted to see that. I was like, why did you do that? Like, I literally wanted to see the blood in the needle as you suck it out of me. And she was like, well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> she didn't seem like scared of it. Um, however, the other doctor was like, you're something else, Dennis. And I was like, oh yeah, I know, I know. Um, I remember when I got a vaccine done and no, it was just getting like, um, like some tests for my blood and I was looking at how my blood was just being sucked out of me and I was just laughing and um, the doctor that was you know um, doing its job looked at me and was like you okay it's really weird because people are scared of needles and then there's me being like yeah but I want to see you take the blood out of me like I want to see that I want to visualize that um, do I have issues yes <laughs> should we be worried from me um, no no I'm good well guys, I think I'll end the video here. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still here, then thank you. I love you. If you want to buy my merch and support me, I would be so appreciative of that. Um, I want to feature you guys wearing my merchandise in my videos. Just if you buy it, post a picture on Instagram and tag me and then um, let me know if you want to be featured or not. And I would I will put you in my video because I just want to see you guys with a dinky rat on you. You know what I'm saying? If you guys like this video, then please like it, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.